Hi, this is Jeremy. I'm here to talk about photosynthesis, specifically the light reactions. There are two parts to photosynthesis, the light reactions and the Calvin-Benson cycle, but in this lecture we'll just talk about the light reactions. They occur in the chloroplast, in these thylakoid membranes. You notice that this chloroplast has three sets of membranes, an outer one, an inner one, and then all these membranes stacked up and things called grana. Um, these are the thylakoid membranes. That's what's colored green. That's where all your chlorophyll is. Let's take a closer look at this part here. So if you look in the thylakoid membranes, you have these funny little lollipops. And those are very important because our main job for the light reactions is to make ATP. These are ATP synthase, a name that makes sense. They synthesize ATP. If you're not familiar with the ATP molecule, um, say we have adenosine, and let's say this represents a phosphate. So here we have adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. If we add another phosphate to that, then I'll have ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. If I can find where my other one went, there it is. If I add a third, then I have adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And so, uh, really the, what this ATP synthase does is it takes the adenosine diphosphate and adds some energy to form adenosine triphosphate. Rather than use this bulky figure, I'll use something simpler. All right, so that's that's job. Obviously, you have in this membrane lots of chlorophyll, and so this chlorophyll is embedded in the membrane. And these come in complexes called photosystems. I've got a little much, so. Let's spread those out. And uh, within those, each of them is going to hold, and I'm not going to do it for all of them, uh, an electron, symbolized by that little yellow bead. It's all about electrons, it seems, that light is going to excite those electrons. We have some other characters in this that I'd like to introduce use some standard type of notation. So you can use the red for oxygen and the white for hydrogen. So if you put those together like that, you have water. Two of them is oxygen. Carbon dioxide has the carbon and two oxygens. And hydrogen ions are just the white beads. So we're going to talk about those a fair bit as we go along. Okay, so we have light coming in and striking one of these chlorophyll molecules that excites the electron when it's going to pass off into another complex system. It's called the electron transport system, which is another series of proteins mostly found in here. Um, all throughout those thylakoid membranes. And those electrons are going to turn this electron transport system. And that in turn, I know this seems convoluted, there's a lot of different moving parts. We have hydrogen ions. This is all, if you remember, in a watery solution. So we have hydrogen ions dissolved in the water, and that's inside and outside of these grana. And when the electrons flow through these electron transport proteins, they are going to pull, and I'll use this one out here because it's more convenient, uh, these hydrogen ions in. And so the more electrons that I excite, the more I can power the electron transport system and pull hydrogens in. I'm creating this powerful gradient of 
hydrogen ions inside of the grana. These now want to escape. It's kind of like it's built up pressure in there. They're going to escape out the ATP synthase molecules because that's the only place that will let them out. This membrane otherwise is a barrier and that allows them out and as they leave ATP is produced every time some hydrogen ions escape. All right, so that explains the ATP part of things. In the end, this electron ends up flowing through this system and is given to another molecule that holds on to it um, called NADPH, which we'll revisit later. Uh, helps carry electrons over to make sugars. Let's solve some of the mysteries of these up here. We don't need to worry about carbon dioxide, but we do need to worry about this that gave up its electron. So this electron is now over here. This molecule is no longer stable. It needs an electron. And that's where water comes in. So water is in that solution. And here we can take an electron from it. These bonds are the bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen are essentially made from electrons. We're going to take that and give it back to chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll is happy, it's stable, it's ready to absorb more light, but this water molecule can no longer stay together. These hydrogen ions are going to end up contributing to that gradient, and now we have just one oxygen atom. If we were to do that again with another water molecule, let me do it the right way this time and put it inside, where did he go? This membrane, uh, give away another electron, let's say to this guy up here. This breaks up, now I have another oxygen. These two combine to form oxygen. So that's where the water and the oxygen come into the equation in photosynthesis. What we formed, this whole convoluted process, is quite a bit of ATP, some NADPH, and we've made our chlorophyll happy by giving its electron back, which we got from water. So all that powered by light. Uh, next we'll make some sugar.